finished installing the seats yesterday and I think they look sick. Um, I didn't finish recording because I ended up doing a burnout because I wanted to join that burnout challenge by Adam LZ. Stay home, guys. Eight, six. Oh, I know this car. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get that one. She's a pretty gnarly driver. And she's doing a face and forward, too. Yeah. If that's the same 86, I think it is. She drives at that um, that track near LA, and she rips. Really? That's sick. Would that be first or second gear? I wasn't paying attention. Probably, probably first in a 4H. But those are the seats. So I pulled it out of the garage today, and let me show you what I found. That is oil. So right now I'm going to pressure wash uh, this area because uh, there was a bunch of oil on the hood. So I'm assuming there was pressure in the crankcase, which made the dipstick pop out and make a mess. I already cleaned it because I just painted it last week. So I didn't want that to settle in. So I'm going to clean everything right now. I'm also going to clean out some of that uh, compound that was left over and just verify that in fact it was the dipstick. I'm hoping that that's where it was coming from because I don't really want to rebuild this engine right now. I sprayed some degreaser on it to get all that um, nasty gunk off of it. Now it's time to pressure wash it. And I've actually put it like on a low, low setting so I don't mess anything up. <laughs> Good. What are you doing? Looking at all the rest of the water. Look at that. There's a little pool. You see it? Oh, nice. Okay. we've sucked out all the water from the cylinder head i'm going to get the last of it with some air I'm going to be doing a compression test today on my H6. I noticed the last few events as well as the burnout I did a couple of days ago that there was oil on the hood. There was oil around the dipstick on the timing cover. You can still see some oil residue on that connector right there even though I pressure washed it yesterday. I'm going to be doing a compression test to check the integrity of the motor. I'm hoping that it's the dipstick because it's old and it doesn't have any resistance anymore maybe that's why it's shooting up easily because i can pull it out with minimal effort um but yeah hopefully the compression test gives me some answers today
All right, spark plugs are off. There they are. It was a minor accident with one of them. It broke. And now we're ready to check cylinder number one. So go for it, Jim. Do it again. That doesn't sound good. Go, cylinder number two. Oh my god. <sighs> Fudge. 179, huh? Okay, we decided to check the compression on the T72 because we have a feeling it might be the gauge, but it might not. So if the readings are low on the T, then most likely it's the gauge so go for it jim do it again what's the reading supposed to be on this one what one 120 right 130 it's 60 yeah <laughs> Are both of them bad? Are both engines bad? <laughs> All right, so this is cylinder number one with the new gauge. Ready? All right, so that's about 160. That's pretty good. All right, now we're in cylinder two. Ready? All right, cylinder number three. This is cylinder number four. Ready? I wrote down all the numbers for a dry compression. That is it right there. So now we're gonna do a wet compression. We've already added a little bit of oil in cylinder one and Jim's going to crank it now. One is 180, wet. All right, cylinder number four, wet compression, go for it. Now we are attaching the air hose because we're doing a leak down test. Look at the air hose, hook it up. It's already at top dead center. So right here, you were just regulated to zero. Because before, like when I hooked it up, it was all the way here. Okay, so now you just want to regulate to zero. Move it, move it. And we're good to go. Now you have like 10% leakage, which is pretty good. It's it's in the green, it's like on the very low side. Mm -hmm. And right now we have, we're at top dead center for mm -hmm. cylinder number one, right there. Mm -hmm. And also just to be sure, a little camshaft there's a dimple right there that's pretty hard to see mm -hmm. so we're just using number one as a reference just to make sure our tool is working good because we know number one we had what like 160. Mm -hmm. so then there you go so then now when we when we go to number two or three or four whatever readings we, we get we know it's as good a, as a reference yeah all right let's go to number two so this is cylinder number two which is the one that was really low for the compression test it's 90% leakage right now. So now we have to solve the mystery of where is it leaking from? Even though technically I'm running on three and a half cylinders, for right now, I'm going to leave the car the way it is. Um, I actually took it up to Little Tahunga today here in LA, the canyons. Go, go. Donuts are out of them. Huh? You 
Pizza done donuts around him. And she sounds good. She she felt great, even though she's not at 100%. With this whole quarantine situation, I don't have any events coming up. So I'm not too worried about it right now. I want to focus all of my energy into the 240SX. And I'm currently working on the wiring. So I want to try to get that out of the way as best as I can. If I need to, I do have a spare motor. Uh, I, I do have a spare 4AG for that car. But like I said, I'm going to leave it the way it is for now. And um, yeah, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Stephanie Driss. I post on my stories there and I'd like to say that they're pretty lit. Um, if you have any questions, I also try to respond there. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.